Right, some clever clog has decided to screw around the back as well. This one's all right, I managed to slide that off and you can obviously see the staining on there. The elbow's not been screwed out the back, which is good, but yeah, that's been screwed on the back. Don't know why they've done that. Let's get that off now as well. And hopefully it should just be somewhere in this section, I hope. Welcome back to today's episode. Hope everyone's well. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Chirag, CP Utility Solutions, and I tend, I try and post three times a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. Predominantly breakdowns and servicing with the odd install chucked in here and there. For those of you who've already been watching and subscribing, welcome back. Today's video, what have I got in today's video? I've got two Worcester jobs, and I've also got a flu job. So this flu was leaking. I had to find where it was leaking and I had to basically sort it. Uh, it was quite a long flu run. I was doing it on my own as well, so it was a bit awkward. you see as the video gets into it. And then I had another Worcester breakdown, which mo majority of people like this one, but there are some people who say it's not right. You know, you've got to use original parts, etc. which I get. I get it's not an, a Worcester. It's not a Worcester approved genuine part, but it's a compatible part. I've not had any callbacks so far. So... I'm just letting you guys know that's what I do to carry out that repair. And I'll put a link in the description below for the part as well. So if you're interested, once you've seen the video, you can get one for yourself. If you don't, that's fine. It's totally up to you. I totally get it. What I do may not be agreeable for everyone, but hey ho, if that was the way, then well, it wouldn't be any fun, would it? So I'm also getting more things prepared for the 10K giveaway. There are going to be some good products that are going to be included in the giveaway, but like I said, you must be subscribed to the channel if you want to be included in, as part of the giveaway. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. Let's get on with the video. Have a good one. So first job today I've got, I keep saying so, I don't know, I think it's just a habit. First job today I've got is a standard service on a Worcester, what well, we've got a Green Star 25i. I'd done a full strip down service on this about a year ago. I can't remember if I filmed it for YouTube. This was before I was doing YouTube properly. So I'm not sure if I did record it for YouTube. It might be on a past video or not, but it's already had a new set of electrodes, new burner seal, new gas tube, new bearing plate. I think that was it. I don't think there was anything else. So today it's going to be just a standard service, which is cleaning out the condensed trap if it needs cleaning, recharging the expansion vessel, and doing my standard 26.9 safety check. So I'm going to start off by doing a tightness test, which is just, gas meters just outside the front door there. So I'm going to go and do that first. And then, yeah, we'll just crack on with the rest. So drop test is done. It's all good. And there we go. That's all the bits that I've done last year. So, so I know the camera shadow is going to get in the way. Full service red seal, gas tube, bearing plate, um, electrodes will change as well. That's part of the red seal. So yeah, inside looking good, visual inspection, nothing really to worry about. Kebab's not rippled either. So let's get it isolated, let's get it drained down, recharge the expansion vessel, even the condensed trap itself. There's only a little bit of dirt in there, so get that cleaned out at the same time. So yeah, this one shouldn't be too long a job. Um, pretty straightforward stuff, bread and butter really. Nice bit of expanding foam around the vessel. That would be fun if you ever want to remove it, but the vessel itself has held pretty good charge, still on 0.8 of a bar. So let's just top that up. I probably won't get any water out of it. Yeah, sweet. So just draining out the condensed trap. Let the rest of that little bit of water dribble out. There we go. Right. Ah, there's actually a bit more than what I thought there was. All right, cool. Let's clean that out and pop it back together. Right, we're pressurized. Boiler's in service mode. Just going to do a little sweep test first. Just to make sure, I mean, it's a bit difficult to see on there, but I've got my analyzer stuck to the side of the boiler case. Yeah, just moving that 
around there. Just making sure we're not picking up any traces of PPM, which we're not. So that's all good. Now, I always do a flue gas analysis first, in the case of, so in case, oh, in case I need to adjust the gas valve, I can do that with the case off and then obviously put the case back on again and retest it. There's that there and I dropped the little black rubber washer. I'll find it in a minute. I'll find it. I saw it drop somewhere here so I'm sure it's somewhere there so I'll look for that in a minute. But let's just make sure so on these maximum we're looking for 9.8 and on minimum 9.2 that's the CO2 readings so it's reading 9.51 at the moment you're allowed 0.5 above or below but I was like to try and get it bang on as close as possible 9.54 so let's come out the way Anti-clockwise, remember on maximum mode, maximum, trying to say maximum rate or maximum mode, so I ended up saying maximum roll or whatever. <laughs> Anti-clockwise to increase your CO2. On minimum mode, it's clockwise to increase the CO2. So it goes in the opposite direction. So that's gone up to 9.63. So let's tweak it a little bit more. So we'll get that up to 9.8. So I'll just get the adjustments and everything and then we'll come back to it. Right, that spin, well, I don't know why I was showing you that. Well, I will show you that. Apparently, I was the first person to service it last year, and now I'm the second one to service it. Let's bring that forward without it all falling off. So 9.85 CO2, which is spot on. Just gas rated it, which is bang on as well. Now let's put that down to minimum. And then just make sure all the readings are fine. And I did find a little black cap in there. It actually fell down here, Sod's Law and underneath there. Typical. I mean, I've got spare caps in the van now, so it's fine, but luckily I found it. So I'm just gonna finish up with this and then get up to the next one. Right, this next one, apparently I've got a leaking flue. Can't see any signs of rust or staining on the flue itself, but it's got a sticker on it. I think they had a service from, it was like an insurance company service or something like that. And they've said that the flue's been leaking. So, let's get the case off. And have a look inside, see if there's any signs of rust. <clears throat> yeah, I can see a bit of rust there. Ah, uh, and I can see a bit of staining there now. So, potentially, flu seal. So, let's try and get that off. Yeah, look, now, you can, now I can see a bit more there as well. I hope I don't have to replace the whole bloody section of flu, and hopefully it's just a short section. And hopefully, I can get away with just replacing the seals themselves, because yeah, to replace the whole flu, well, still got to be done one way or the other, but let me take that apart, take that apart and see what's going on. Right, some clever clog has decided to screw around the back as well. This one's all right, I managed to slide that off and you can obviously see the staining on there. The elbow's not been screwed out the back, which is good, but yeah, that's been screwed on the back. Don't know why they've done that. Let's get that off now as well. And hopefully it should just be somewhere in this section I hope. So I can't see any staining further down there on any of those two sections. Okay, so I've got that section off, but that's looking okay. Taking the elbow apart, that's looking okay. Obviously now I will replace the seals anyway, but the rust is coming from further back, so it means I have to start disconnecting another section down there. Basically keep going until I can find where it's actually split. So I end up 
taking part all of it anyway. It looks like so that there was that short section wasn't there. Then we had this piece which was latched onto there, and I couldn't actually see. So there's no rusting on there. There's no rusting on this section, and there's no rusting on this section either. However, the rusting is starting from this one here. So you can see underneath there, but I can't see any signs of where it would have been leaking from. There's no split in the flue itself. So that's all fine. I think it must have just been a dislodged flue seal. So the rust obviously it's not gone completely through the flue. I'll, I'll test it with my screwdriver, but I think we should be okay. Yeah, no, that's not, not going to pierce it. So it's not that bad that we need to actually replace the whole flue. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to replace all of the flue seals. So I'll make sure that every flue seal has been replaced, everything's intact. I'm going to change, don't need to, yeah, change the flue seal in here as well. Even though that looks, yeah, look, that looks like it's been a bit worse for us. So I'm just going to count up how many flue seals I need, replace all the flue seals, pop it all back together, do my flue integrity check, do my 26.9 checks. If it's all good, we're out of here. And a nice quick job because I haven't got time to be replacing a whole section of flue like this. But I think I've got enough flue seals in the van. I'll double check. If not, I'll have to make a quick trip to the suppliers, get some more flue seals, and then we can just carry on with the day. Right, I'm back. Six. Flue seals have been replaced. So this is the part number 981233. That's for the 60 mil flue seals. So new one in there, new one up there, and then three, four, five, six. So let's get it all greased up and then get the flue back in. Right, that's all done. And yes, I did another clip there just for safe measure because there's a clip there, but yeah, I thought it needed another clip. So I banged another clip on. All flues have been replaced. Got to give this a bit of a wipe down inside, try and get rid of some of this rust and leave it out inside here as well to let the next person know that all the flues have been replaced. 26.9 checks, everything, make sure everything checks out. And then we are out of here. Right. Clean bill of health. Can't actually peel this off properly. So what I might just do, oh, I'll try. I always just try and leave the top bit on and I'll put these stickers on so that when it comes to taking it off, it's not such a headache. I mean, I've written on the inside of the PCB cover as well, what I've done, but yeah, I think I've just put a Big old cross through it. That'll do. And I'll issue the gas set for it as well. So everything's there, everything's on, we're all back. Let's go to the next one. So got a Worcester Green Star 30 SI. Customers have been away and they've come back and it's not doing anything. So diverters marked over. I can hear that. Let's see. Pumps running. Now, it might be a coincidence, but I reckon the fan has gone again on this one. Similar sort of scenario. They've been away for a while, come back, and I reckon the fan's gone, but I'm just going to wait to see what sequence of flashing lights we get on here. But in the meantime, I'll get the case off and do some tests on the fan. Here we go. Now, I don't know how clearly it shows up on the camera, but we've got a fast flash on the blue light, which when you look in the MIs for the fault finding side, fast flash, lockout reset button is off, volatile lockout, fan doesn't run. 
So I'm going to check we've got power going to the blue and the purple. If we do, then we know it's going to be the fan. Now, the only thing I need to check to make sure is it just a fan PCB that's gone or if it's the entire fan. So we'll get the cover off and check that the impeller is spinning freely. As long as that's spinning freely, we should be able to just change the circuit board over. Right, let's do a test. So we want to look at between the brown and the purple. If we're getting 240 there. Come on. Yep, 240 volts. Fan's not spinning. Let's just give a little flick to the impeller on the fan. Yeah, that's moving pretty. I'm happy with yeah. how that's moving. So I'm going to get a circuit board out of the van and we'll try and get you up and running today. So before I change the fan PCB over, which is this part, I get them from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description so anyone can get hold of them as well. I'm going to repressurize the expansion vessel as well because the customers also stated to me that when they run the heating, the pressure is going up into the red. So Whilst I'm here, might as well kill two birds with one stone, get that sorted, and Josh is calling me. So let me get that sorted, and then I'll come back when I'm doing the fan. Right, that's the fan PCB in. I've checked in there, there is a three amp. Let's power it on. Ah, got a blip on the fan, that's always a good sign. Ho, ho, ho! Turn the light off in here. Merry Christmas. I bring you the gift of heating hot water. Let's go. Let's go on to the next one. Obviously, 26.9 checks on this, and then I'm out of here. If you could check that radiator for me. Are we getting any heat to it yet? It's starting to get warm? Kitchen, Kitchen one? Yeah. Take away the heat. Yeah. Let's have a quick look and just make sure we are getting. Yeah. It's getting warm. Isn't it? Yeah, it's starting to come through. You want to check the oh, one yeah. in the lounge? Yeah. Sorry? You want to check the one in your lounge? It would take a little while because it's been off for, yeah, been off for a while, but you should start get, feeling yeah, a little bit of heat. Good? Lovely stuff. 